This continues the presentation on probability. In this video, we'll give you an alternative method, in case the tables aren't working out for you, to find probabilities from a given situation. If you are finding you don't like tables, don't worry, there is an alternative way to look at probabilities, called tree diagrams. The diagram seen here is the general form of a tree diagram. Unlike tables, tree diagrams are written in terms of decimals, so there is no number to start with. The first branch of your tree diagram must be your unconditional probability. The second set of branches are the conditional probabilities and their complements that you were given in the problem. The last set of branches are what we call AND probabilities, where we just multiply across our branches. So P of A times P of B given A gives us P of A and B. These four branches will match the interior cells of a table. Trees may be a bit harder to set up, but most probabilities are easier to read. The only difficulty comes in reversing the conditioning from what the problem gives you. For this tree, finding the probability of B given A is easy because probability of B given A is right here. But if I need to reverse that and find the probability of A given B, that seems to be a bit more difficult. It can still be done though. The probability of A given B is just finding how likely A is to occur if B has already occurred. In other words, I can find the probability of A given B by finding how often A and B occur together divided by the total times that B has occurred. So we can get this from the last part of the tree. A and B have occurred together in this top branch. But what about the total for B? Well, looking here, B occurs in two different spots on my tree. It occurs in my first branch and in my third branch. So I can see how often B will occur by adding these two branches together. In other words, the probability of B is the probability of A and B plus the probability of A complement and B. Back to the envelopes example. This is the same envelopes example as you saw in the probabilities part one video. Now, instead of using this example to set up a table, try to set up a tree instead. Pause the video and then play once your tree is completed. Conditional probabilities, which have to do with which envelope we select. There's still a 50-50 chance of selecting either the 21 or the $40 envelope, so that's where we'll start. Then, if I've conditioned on selecting the $21 envelope, there's a 50-50 chance of either selecting the $20 bill or the $1 bill. If, however, I've selected the $40 envelope, I will always select the $20 bill, and I will never select the one. Fill in your table by multiplying along our branches to find those AND probabilities. Finally, let's answer our question. If we select a $20 bill, what is the probability that we've selected a $40 envelope? Well, remember, that is the probability of selecting the $20 bill and the $40 envelope divided by the total probability of selecting the $20 bill. Well, the $20 bill shows up in the third branch and the first branch, so if I add 0.5 and 0.25, I can get the total probability of selecting the $20 bill. Then, my conditional probability of choosing a $40 envelope, given I've selected a $20 bill, is the AND probability of the $40 envelope and the $20 bill of 0.5, divided by the 0.75, that was my total probability of selecting the $20 bill, which gives me the same two-thirds answer I got from the table.